Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and today we're going to upgrade a lead acid battery project with a drop-in lithium upgrade. So in front of me, I've got two things, the original solar ammo can project and an amper time 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. Now, when I originally designed this solar ammo can project, the whole idea was that I would have something that I could show people how they could build it themselves using simple off-the-shelf components and learn about batteries and electronics while they're doing that. And hopefully, when they're all done, have a nice little project for camping, convenience, or emergency preparedness. Now, at the time, I used a simple lead-acid battery. And one of the most common comments on that video was, hey, what about lithium? Can we use a lithium battery in this project? Well, absolutely. It's just that at the time, lithium batteries were either really expensive or you would literally have to build it yourself with individual cells, nickel strips, a battery spot welder, and a battery management system. Well, nowadays, you can get all of that together in one box, everything you need as a literal drop-in replacement. Now, what else is neat about this is the lithium iron phosphate chemistry actually translates to 12 volts very well. The individual cells are 3.2 volts nominal, so four of those in series is 12.8 volts. Yeah, okay, that's, that's just common, mostly charged 12-volt battery. That's absolutely perfect. Lithium batteries offer a number of advantages over lead, including that they're lighter weight, they have a higher capacity, and a longer lifespan. So let's open up this battery and see what we have inside here. Again, this is a 12 amp hour capacity amper time. Uh, right away we get some sort of a little instruction manual in here. It's got the various tech specs on it. And I can also see that we actually have some padding in here. So good to know our battery is not just getting bopped around in shipment. And it's bubble wrapped. So let's take this out. And also right away I can see that the terminals are protected. They've got uh, some little covers over our terminal tabs here. The other thing, boy is this lightweight, uh, lithium is just so much lighter than lead acid. It's just amazing. So on kind of that very first spec that I noticed was the weight. It's very lightweight and according to our manual here, it weighs approximately 3.42 pounds or just over one and a half kilograms. That's really not very much at all when compared to this, which is oh, about eight pounds or so. And actually, why don't we take the battery out of this to get a little bit better comparison. All I have to do is unplug the positive and negative wires from the battery, and then I'll bring it out so we can compare it to our new battery. And even if I compare these side by side, it's, uh, it's almost comical, the difference in weight. In fact, I actually have two of these Amper Time batteries, and the two of them together weigh less than one of the lead acid batteries. Uh, so it's kind of an interesting comparison right there. Now, the next spec on here that kind of uh, catches my eye is... It's marked as being a 12 amp hour battery. And if we look on this Mighty Max battery, this one is actually marked as a 15 amp hour battery. Uh-oh, that sounds like this lead acid battery has more capacity than our new lithium battery, but that's not actually right. And the big reason why is that with a lead acid battery, you can only discharge it down so far before recharging it. And typically, if we want any sort of a decent lifespan out of this, we don't want to discharge it more than about halfway, which really means it's not a 15 amp hour battery, it's about a seven and a half amp hour battery. The other thing that happens, particularly with lead acid batteries, is the faster we're drawing power out of it, the less total capacity that we get. That's something called the Pukert effect, if I'm pronouncing it right. I've read that word a zillion times. I've never actually heard anybody else say it. Uh, but lithium suffers from that same effect less than lead acid does. So even though this is marked right on the box as being a slightly lower capacity, in actual usage, it's actually a lot higher. 
Now this also ties right in with the next thing we want to think about, which is life cycle of the battery. Now a cycle is just discharging and recharging the battery. And right here, the amper time battery is rated for 4,000 cycles. Lead acid batteries are typically rated for, well, hundreds of cycles. So we've got hundreds versus thousands. And since this is rated at 4,000 cycles, if I wanted to use my solar ammo can every single day, discharging it and recharging it, 365 days a year, the amper time battery would give us about 10 years worth of use. So lithium batteries are essentially better in nearly every single way than lead acid batteries. Uh, the other thing too is I wanted to make sure to get a battery that was very similar uh, in physical size and shape as this one because it did specifically have to fit this project. And if we look close here, these two batteries are very, very similar size. Not identical, but pretty darn close. Uh, the other important thing is that the electrical terminals on here are also the same size and shape and they're in the same position. So let's do our actual physical upgrade. Inside the box, we've got our control panel with our solar charge controller and all our other accessories. And just right now, looking at the battery, we're about 12.4, 12.5 volts. I'm just gonna turn it off and all I have to do is flip up our entire panel and underneath, you can see our connections, positive and negative, and I'm just gonna unhook those. Move the panel out of the way, and pull the battery out. Now I'm gonna take our lithium battery, set this in place. Now normally I would put a piece of double-sided foam tape under that, and that's gonna prevent it from sliding side to side. It fits exactly across this way, so no issues with movement there. I'm just uh, skipping that step for simplicity's sake. But then all I have to do is plug back in our negative and fused positive wires and tuck the extra wires in that space designed for them. So now we've got our new battery and it's at uh, about 13.2, 13.3 volts, ready to go. Now the one thing you may still want to do though is just tweak your solar charge controller. And I think the two settings that I'm going to change on here is if we look at the voltage we're charging at, um, I'm gonna set that to 14.4 volts. That's what's recommended with this battery. And then the other thing is the low voltage cutoff. This is the point at which the output from the solar charge controller to your loads, anything that you've got hooked up to it, lights, charging, other things, whatever. The point at which it cuts power from the battery to those loads. So you can't drain the battery any further. And in this case, uh, what I'm gonna do is set that right at about 12 volts. Below that voltage, this battery is gonna plummet down to almost nothing really fast. So we'll use that as our low voltage cutoff. So that's it. We just literally dropped in our drop-in replacement lithium battery instead of that lead acid one. Uh, it's gonna act exactly the same. Really, the only difference is that it weighs less. Uh, we've got more capacity, and it's going to have a longer lifespan than the lead-acid battery would. So it's pretty cool that nowadays we can take advantage of improvements in battery technology, take an old lead-acid project, and bring on the lithium. So I hope you like these videos. If you do, please like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. Uh, check us out over at 300mpg.org. And until next time, stay charged up. With this, all we have to do is take our positive and negative wires. <laughs> Not enough hands. <laughs>